everybody, and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork, and with me I have Norman Sanso. Hello, hello. And brawny reviewer extraordinaire, Silver Quill. I don't like squash as a food or a game. <laughs> you know, I have no idea what this fruit is. It looks like a pear, but it's not a pear. It's not as tasty either. Oh, gosh. I guess if it was a pear, that would be really, really, really cruel for Applejack. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I will see her eat a strawberry one day. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> okay, no. I have to tie her to a chair and speed it to her. She will come soon. Oh, that's a new fetish for the list. <laughs> there you go. Strawberry fetish. Ay, ay, ay. For, anyway. for, anyone who's, for anyone who's wondering, we are reviewing the Applejack Micro. That is issue number six of the Micro series. Written by. Who knows? Bobby, Bobby Curno, the yeah. editor of the MLP Comics, and drawn by Brenda Hickey. Also colors are by Heather Breckel, like always. Mm-hmm. So, uh, in this comic book issue, Applejack is uh, preparing for the apple harvest when all of a sudden she and her farm, they get attacked by the, what is it, the Sasquatch? <laughs> the yeah. Squasquatch? The, the Sasquatch. Is the Sasquatch. <laughs> yeah, I seriously, I have no idea what this thing is, but it turn it it change it uh, like substitutes apples with squash squashes or mm-hmm. whatever these fruits are, and it's just it, it's a disaster. So Applejack take, ma- takes matters on her own hoofs to see this situation fixed. Wow, haven't we seen that before? Indeed. So, <laughs> like always, I'm going to save my opinion for last. But let's see what you guys think. What, what do you think of it? Well. <sighs> Uh, way back when, the, the very beginning of the review, when we touched upon the micro, I said that the Applejack micro is not my favorite. And reading through it again, it's changed a bit, but still, the Applejack micro is still not my favorite. It's a fun tale. And when I first read it, and when I read when I found the ending, uh, the twist at the end, I thought, oh joy, here we go with Mirror to Will 2.0. <laughs> But thinking about it, I was like, okay, it actually did a better job than Mary Well for a couple of reasons that I will get into. It is the common problem with Applejack. She is stubborn. She is so tightly bound to her responsibilities that she feels she has to take everything on her own. And so, I, I, and I understand for a lot of fans, that can feel so boring and overdone. For me, it makes sense with her character, but I can see how it uh, it just doesn't inspire a lot of new things. It is also, though, the only uh, micro-comic that makes no reference to the other main six, hmm. which I find interesting. Well, maybe as we get into the more of the second-tier characters, they, but you know, usually in these micros, you, it focuses on one of the main six, but there's always another member on hand to serve as sort of a, a counterpoint or a sidekick. But as usual, you can't have Applejack without the apples. That is a very good point that you bring up there, because yes, this is the one comic where, actually one of the few comics where none of the other main six appears. Uh, it's just AJ and just AJ and her family. But then again, like you said, Applejack has her family to go with her. She doesn't need any other support characters, like Big Mac, Granny Smith, and Apple Bloom. They are there, and they provide the support. They provide the um, they provide the counterpoint for whatever Applejack is going through. And it's very funny. In this one comic, yeah, Applejack does lose her mind. <laughs> and it's cute because, um, yeah, when you think about it, Applejack is the, the uh, she's the fixed point, the straight mare of the main six. But whenever she loses her mind and Twilight is not around, it's her family, the one that rails her back into, into sanity. Mm-hmm. That's true. Which... Yeah, it's something that I never thought about it until now. It's like, yeah, that is that is actually true. It's her family, the one that keeps her uh, sane <laughs> from turning into a silly pony. Sadly, she does turn into a silly pony way more often, in <laughs> more often than not, in this issue, and that is the problem that I have with it. Uh, I love the imagination. I love the interaction that all the characters have between each other, and I I do like some of the ideas. By the way, the surveillance cameras uh, that are actually mirrors. <laughs> I love that. That is that is very clever. That is very cool. I like that that uh, that one concept. But we are back to square one with Applejack. We are mm. we are 
we are going through the exact same thing that we go through whenever there is a Fluttershy episode. Yeah. You know, is that ah oh, Fluttershy she doesn't have a spine and she loses a spine for the end of the to during the episode and then at the end of it she loses the spine and then yeah. she is back to be meek and and weak and everything. That is the thing with Applejack. She is very stubborn. She is very oh I can do this myself. I am a warm one pony army. I can take on this. Oh no, I cannot take on this. I need my family to help and then is back to square one with her. Yeah, I mean, me, when I first read this comic, like, as we go through and I keep reading, and to me, this felt like, haven't we done this before? Isn't, yeah. didn't she kind of learn her lesson in the very first comic? I'm sorry, not in the very this first is, episode? This is like episode that? four of season one, Applebug season. Didn't we touch upon this already? Yeah, I know. No, no, I can do this myself. I can do this myself. <laughs> I know that uh, stubbornness is something that you cannot get rid of in a day. That mm-hmm. you just you you don't have enough with just one lesson. The same way that uh, the same way that we need a couple of episodes on bullying, uh, both Griff on the brush off and ba- ba- one bad apple, mm-hmm. is because it's an issue that doesn't go away with one uh, one lesson. However you should try to explain it in way more interesting ways and way more endearing ways than having Applejack make silly faces and go, oh, I'm going to sleep deprived again. Okay, I'm going to think like a Sasquatch. Mm. No, I'm going to make a face here in this page because they find this funny. Because yeah. I'm a silly pony after all. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, to me it's like so many wasted opportunities in this comic could have gone yeah. so much better. But, it could, have gone, but it could have gone so much worse as well. That's what I thought. That's what I thought when I first read this. Because, like, okay, me flipping through pages, looking at things, it, it, like, thinking about it, what was so bad about this? Like, what was so bad? Like, the art's awesome. The color's good. Like, the texts are nice. But thinking about it really hard, it was the story that didn't feel right for me. Because we've seen this over and over again. It's the classic Applejack story where, okay, what do we do? Make her stubborn. What do we do? Make her stubborn. Make her do stuff that is related to Applejack. It's the common Applejack trope. And unfortunately, it's a big part of her character, but she need, to bring out her best, you need to pair her up with someone. Mm. Which is why I think she works better in the Friends Forever series than she does trying to act a solo meal. Oh, yeah, she does. I, I think, honestly speaking, I think she can work solo all she needs to do is well all the writer needs to do is find a good story that works for her like st- starting out with this whole story where oh i'm panicking because we need to uh get things ready before things happen oh let's get this ready oh panic 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 may i call in the booing squad because i am about to get booed okay go ahead <laughs> okay the one the one example that we we have from the show, actually, that shows Applejack can hold a story on herself uh, involving her, her family and everything, but that she can still uh, stand by herself, no problem, that ha- doesn't have anything to do with being stubborn, mm-hmm. that, will be, uh, that will be Leap of Faith. Oh, wow. Uh, okay, James. Uh, you did not like that one. <laughs> no, I didn't like that episode. That is the weakest episode of season four for me. But... The one thing that that episode got right was Applejack. Oh, yeah. I... That episode did a lot of things wrong. The song was forgettable. Mm-hmm. The conflict with Granny Smith was weak as wet paper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Flim Flam brothers were not interesting. The character of, of Silver Shield was very boring. But Applejack was faced with a conflict that didn't involve being stubborn. It was very well done. Mm-hmm. It showed her being uh, dealing with it. And it showed her final resolution in the end that challenged the way she is in that it's not just that she's a stubborn, it's also that she or she cannot tell a lie. That she's she, impossible to... She, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. She got caught between two moral absolutes and didn't know which one to choose. Mm-hmm. E- exactly. And it was a great conflict. So yeah, it is possible to make an interesting story about Applejack without her being stubborn. So whenever we go back to the whole, oh, Applejack is stubborn. She likes to trip over fences and eat apples all day. <laughs> Are we talking about Applejack uh, Generation 4 or Applejack Generation 1 here? Yeah, true. Hey, so, hey, yeah. Look out for Generation 1. I, I saw a comic. She has killed people. 
<laughs> yeah, she does, actually. Uh, yeah, actually, what? Generation 1 Applejack can be quite a murderous badass. She took out of... I'm, I'm scared of two things in G1. Applejack and that rainbow locket. That thing is a spectral psycho killer. <laughs> wow, okay. I'll get into that in my own reviews, but I'm just saying, fear the G1. Wow, all right, all right, all right. I mean, what can we say more about this story or this comic? Like, I will say one more thing. Right. I, I will say one more thing, and you just brought it up, is that I don't think this is going to be a very long review. In oh, fact, yeah. I think we are kind of winding up to the end of it, mm-hmm. because it just, nothing happens. Yeah. Nothing happens. Like, the, you know how sometimes a good conflict, a good story, ends with the character in a position, and it starts with the character in a position, and it mm-hmm. ends with the character in a different position. Mm-hmm. That is called having a character arc. Mm-hmm. That is called having the character change his or her perspective, attitude, way of seeing things, mentality, not necessarily personality. If a character starts the, if Applejack starts being honest and stubborn, she can. St- she can end the story being uh, honest and stubborn, but she could change her perspective on things. But this story doesn't do such a thing. It's just so bland and uninteresting. And Nothing happens in it, mm-hmm. well, which is something that cannot be said about. It's something that cannot be said about the other uh, micros. Uh, Twilight. She starts the story being, you know, enthusiastic and kind of like, oh, look at this uh, test. I'm going to focus on. On this, uh, on passing this test, by the end of the story, she doesn't care about the test. She just wants uh, Jade Singer to come back to uh, to come back to writing. Uh, the Rainbow Dash one, uh, she starts the story just wanting to vanquish that team because it's there. Finally, she ends up realizing that she wants to vanquish it because uh, Ponyville is in danger. Mm-hmm. Rarity, she starts feeling. Uh, uh, betrayed by Applejack for like bringing her to this country house in the middle of nowhere farm and she ends helping them out and bringing the best out of her same with Pinky when she's trying to convince this uh, pony Atsy clown uh, to go back to his ways when they actually end, and they end up figuring out a way for him to keep being a clown without having to perform every night uh, it's like it, it's the it's the character that has to change without changing the personality. Mm, they can true. do that. They didn't do that with the Applejack comic, though. Mm, true, true. And pause. Uh, silver drop. Silver drop? Mm-hmm. Oh, fucking hell. But I'm just going to see if I can get him on. Back see. I just kept going on a rant. No, it was really okay. It was really okay. So I was just... Ooh. Like, I, I want... Hey, Silver, there you are. Here I am. I'm sorry, I don't know where I got booted. Mm, no problem. Something, something will happen. Yeah. And James, like I wanted to let you know, but you were on a roll, so I didn't want to disturb you. No, that's just, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I I'm almost done with my rant. You can mm. uh, you can pick up where I where I left it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Let me see here. I I, I basically, uh, if you miss the 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 rant, silver, I basically just said that. Uh, Every character in the micros, they had a character arc going and they got it completed. Well, Applejack didn't because she didn't have a character arc to begin with. She started the, the story being one way. She ended up being the same way. Nothing changed on her. Okay. I think I know what to say now. Okay. Let me get this one. Three, two, one. You know, James, it's... I, I, I don't want to say I disagree, but in the comic here, Applejack started out being like, oh, I can do this. I can do this on my own. Like, ah, I don't need you guys. You guys go and enjoy the holidays by yourself. Like, uh, it, it doesn't, it don't take everyone. I'm sorry. Uh, you don't, we don't need any, everyone to suffer for this. Like, you guys go enjoy yourself. I do this. It's, it's going to be a piece of cake. And in the end, she kind of realized, oh no, I can't do this on my own. Family, please help me. And everyone says, oh yeah, this is going to be fun. Woohoo! And in, in the end, they captured the Sasquatch and it turned out to be Granny, what a twist. I'm not Shyamalan. Yeah, but then there is another extra twist when they are looking at the photos and, hey, look, it turns out that the Sasquatch is real. Can somebody explain to us? No. What a twist. It's it's annoying. No, I don't like that kind of twist because it's like, why? I, Just why? Why would you do that? It, it, it was such a neat, little, good, happy ending. In that, yeah, that's good. That's an explanation. It's simple. It's fine. It's perfect. 
But then it turns out that the Sasquatch is real. No, I mean, okay. Uh, Why did you give it this double cross? This is so this is so pointless. No, I mean, okay, I, I don't know. Okay, here's the thing that I'm thinking in my head. Like, it's, okay, it's a dumb explanation. It's going to be really silly. But the point of the whole story here that they're trying to do is Granny Smith wanted to teach Applejack a lesson that you need to relax and you need to rely on your family. She asked the Sasquatch for help to do this joke in her mind where Applejack involved the family to help her solve this problem. But in the end, uh, it caused more problems for Applejack. And uh, it's... No, uh, I'm just pretty... I can't defend it. I, I'm I'm trying to find a way to clearly explain this without using head cannons, but no, <laughs> I can't. They're friends, that's about it. The, uh, f- Granny Smith and the Sasquatch are friends, that's all I can say. I'll take a step here. First of all, I, I want to start with something small. When we, when we talk about the colors, because I do like the artwork in this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I do think it's beautiful. And this is one of the very few comics that has depicted Ponyville in winter. Ooh. Pure winter. Which mm-hmm. is something, usually where they're wrapping it up. So it's just fascinating to see the apples. Well, more often than not, it's really just there's snow on the ground. But in a moment, I'll get into what I think is, are, is the best page in the whole comic. But I just find it fascinating to, t- to put the setting in winter when even the show itself is very hesitant to get into uh, the colder season. The weird thing with the colors, however, have you looked at Applejack's f- and Big Macintosh's freckles in this mm-hmm. comic? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, they're black. They're black, and as are the apples on Granny's shawl. Oh, yeah, that. And I just find that so curious. I'm not sure if the colorist left them alone because from the inker. I don't even know if that's the right term, but... <laughs> uh, but it is so strange because I'm just used to this one color scheme. And even though it's a tiny detail, it really jumps out at me. Mm. Uh, you know, I now, didn't realize until sorry. now, you're right, they are black. Wow. So I'm just sort of like, oh, this artwork is so good. I'm just sort of surprised that this one thing, though print is a very different medium from uh, video or the or you know uh, tele- and, or and, television, and video and television and the internet. Yeah, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. It's all kind of one and the same at, at times. But in terms of the Sasquatch, uh, part of me, much like how I liked that daring to do was at one point fiction within fiction. I kind of like that even in a world with hydras and timber wolves and all these creatures that are documented, it's still got a few surprises, a few things that even the ponies themselves don't widely know. The double twist, yeah, it, it, is, kind of, it is kind of corny and perhaps unnecessary. Oh, or goodness. maybe... Or maybe that Granny Smith could have just let the Sasquatch go uh, rather than pretend to be it. Mm-hmm. I also question where in the hay did she get a mecha suit? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Super yeah. Robo Granny, activate! Super Robo Granny. <laughs> okay, does, okay. she, does it work like the, like the Jaegers in Pacific Rim? She has to blend minds with somebody else? <laughs> oh, God, no. No, no. Oh, my gosh. I'm not sure I want to be in that mind. Oh, God. I don't. Apples! <laughs> Apples, apples, apples. apples. Yeah, no, I but handle a drinking game on that. <laughs> I can I can see where you're coming from, though. When you say that it is good to have other uh, mysteries in the world of Equestria that are yet to be explained, uh, because yeah, there are many weird things in 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 not just in the outskirts of Ponyville. Hell, just the Everfree Forest has more monsters than than a Guillermo del Toro movie. <laughs> but the fact that they give you a double twist. To me, that is kind of like, and with the, if you excuse the expression, but they are jerking us around. Huh. That is, that is like, that is like, haha! You think it's, you think it's cheese, but it's turned out to be gorgonzola. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, piss off! Get out of here with your stupid double twist. This is so unnecessary. Like, it's no you could Buddha. have. It's oh, that's no good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it God. is. It, it is kind of frustrating though because you can totally skip that. And you could have a scene where uh, they have the Sasquatch on the bottom of the pit, and they kind of like befriend him. And then they end entire they, they end the thing with uh, taking a picture with the Sasquatch or whatever, and letting him go. Or, or but 
it's like, why do you have to give us a double twist? You could do a million things before giving us the double twist. I don't see the point. I just, I don't like double twists. This is one of the reasons why some movies, uh, they just lose me when they just start twisting and twisting, the, twisting the story around you, and you are like, I am so lost. I don't know what's going on anymore. It doesn't More get that bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's, it's, it's like it doesn't get as bad as that. If you want a movie that is just twist after the other, uh, watch for a movie what, uh, called Deception. Deception. All right. Deception, starring uh, Ben Affleck and Gary Sinise. Uh, watch that movie because it's just annoying with the <laughs> amount of plot twists that it gives you. Oh, it's just, boy. it is absolutely annoying oh. to the point that you will want to set the movie on fire. <laughs> With the constant plot twists and change of stories and change of characters that make no sense whatsoever. Okay. This one doesn't get as bad as that, but if any, anything reminds me of that movie, is just that's not a good sign. All right, all right, all right. I mean, uh, what else can we say? Because I blatantly say what I think about it. Um, Silver, you? Uh, let's, actually, there are a couple of things that I, I kind of want to touch on. And first... Going back to the issue of Applejack's character arc, or lack thereof, yeah. um, I think this. I think we saw something similar in the Twilight micro in that she Twilight didn't undergo a huge change herself. Mm-hmm. But what we saw there, my favorite part of the Twilight micro, was when she told um, her new friend, whose name is totally escaping me at the moment, she told her about the pressure she felt as Celestia's students that need to live up and prove herself every day and how then, vital her, her friends were. So that didn't really, I didn't feel like, oh, Twilight has undergone this huge change, but I appreciate her character a little more because of this. Mm, true that. The now name here, is Jade Singer. Jade Singer, thank you. No problem. Um, now for Applejack, this is the page right after that uh, spread with the song. And as a side note, I find it kind of strange that while Pinky's Poniachi song made it onto YouTube <laughs> as an actual musical piece, as far as I know, no one has wanted to touch this one. It's just sort of, it's almost more of a rhyme than a song. Indeed, indeed. But the next page, uh, where Applejack is looking over her fa- her failed efforts and she just throws her hat down, throws out a bunch of southern s curses. Mm-hmm. Darn dang shoot fiddlesticks and marmalade. <laughs> Such language. <laughs> Wash your mouth out with soap. Here we say marmite. <laughs> <laughs> but so that that's kind of her breakdown moment. But then the next three panels, her just huffing and you see her breath in the snow. It is snowing. Mm-hmm. The, perp, the hues of violet uh, on just about everything, even touching on her coat, it looks cold. It looks quiet. And it looks like she is just having this moment of weakness. And she asks, "Who's? it's not your job to make everything perfect. Then whose job is it? And it, it's moments like that where I kind of appreciate Applejack's character and how she has taken on so many burdens at a young age. It's why I really root for her character. Uh, it's moments like this that make me appreciate that. And so I, it, that moment, at least, is a very, uh, in my opinion, powerful one that really gets to the heart of her character and why she does that. And that is what I like about the micros. It's the chance to see the character at their best, or at least to show the heart of that character. That is true. That is true, and, and and I will agree with you. That page is awesome. I just uh, I just rechecked it to uh, to know that uh, what you were talking about, so I wasn't I, I wasn't lost. And you're absolutely right. That is a very beautiful page. It's brilliant. It feels so, it has a very serene se- sense of solitude. Uh-huh. Yeah. But it is it is uh, one of the best moments, if if not the best moment of the micro. It still doesn't excuse what it comes from. Is that it oh, no. still comes from a story that is all about being stubborn, being stubborn, haha, I can do this on my own. I am a thick headed numbskull and I don't need anybody's help. Oh, wait a minute, I need to relearn my lesson. Mm, that, true. Fair enough. That is a problem that cannot be fixed in one episode, in one comic issue, or in one book. 
you need help when you are that kind of person. Believe me, I mm-hmm. know I am like that. Mm-hmm. But god damn it, it's not all about that. There are other things going on. However, I'm totally giving you that. That is a beautiful comic page. Mm, true, true. I mean, from beyond this point on, the story shift gear to include everyone and it has that sense of let's work together to solve this one problem. That part got better for me. It made me feel for Applejack and yay, Applejack's awesome in this in this part or in this scene. And when they caught the Sasquatch and it re- after the reveal, that was like, what? What? <laughs> That's why I call it Mary do well 2.0. Like, it took me on and on. Yeah, he's... It, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm actually very critical of Mayor Duell for that engineered lesson aspect, which is usually not how this show goes. <laughs> I think the only one who engineers uh, lessons is Princess Celestia. <laughs> Yay. No, but yeah. still, but still. I mean, the story, what? it's... It, it's... Uh, I don't know. The story is just... Okay, I guess. I mean, are we talking um, about Mer Well or the comic? The comic. Mer okay. Well is another story for another day. I don't think we'll touch oh, that Oh God, one. I don't know if I want oh, to no. touch Mer Well. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm going to be doing a, a Mer Well review at some point, but uh, oh my God, <laughs> I do, I do, I, I do want to talk about a critical difference between this and Mer Well. One of the reasons I like this more. All right. There's that scene, which I actually thought was pretty funny, where Applejack is camouflaged as part of the. <laughs> Yay! Talk about how oh, being no, a no, yeah, that, that was brilliant. That was completely like Predator or Rambo, <laughs> first blood part two. That was hilarious. <laughs> or even Nightmare on Elm Street. She's coming out of the tree. Oh, like. God. It is terrifying as well. Yeah. Look at Smith. <laughs> She's completely horrified. She's like, ah! <laughs> my <laughs> poor ah! <laughs> It's a good thing that she didn't have a heart attack. Happy uh, heartwarming, uh, Applejack. You gave, you gave your granny a conniption. <laughs> <laughs> but the the critical difference, the one thing I wish they'd done in Mirror Well that they do here is that they try to talk to the pony who's making the mistake. Granny comes up and says, you know, well, it's her who says, it's not your job to make everything perfect. Mm-hmm. And Applejack doesn't listen. Okay, that's part of the character. That's part of her conflict this uh story, but how much better does Granny look for trying to talk her granddaughter down so that when it's revealed uh, that she's the Sasquatch in disguise, there's at least a little bit of justification. You wouldn't listen to words, so here's action. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I agree that the, the double twist really isn't like, oh, wow, that's great. Yeah, sure. Uh, but at least Granny doesn't look like she was abusing or overly manipulating her children, her grandchildren. Just that one little act makes her look better than Mary Will did for six, for five other ponies. Mm. Well, then again, there is also the evidence that uh, very clear evidence that hey, Granny Smith has a picture with the Sasquatch in her photo album that Applejack is looking at. So now Applejack is gonna go to Granny Smith and she's gonna go okay. Okay, so that Sasquatch suit, <laughs> um, how much did it cost you, and was it worth it to give me a lesson? Uh, oh, it didn't cost me nothing, so, uh, Applejack. Didn't you know the Sasquatch had a mate? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to I have just that. taken this very dark place. <laughs> oh, God, anywho, yeah. <laughs> James, what do you so think? About that ex- so about that execution of last century up... <laughs> <laughs> no longer my darkest joke. <laughs> the best. The best. Uh, now, uh, to me, this is the weakest of the micros. Not just out of the main six, but of general. Like out of all the ten micro comics, uh, this is by far the weakest. Mm. However, that is like saying, out of all the My Little Pony episodes, my least favorite is putting your hoof down. That doesn't mean anything. Mm. It's still there are there are still good things on uh, on 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 this micro comic. Hell, just the the, the visual aspect of it. It's beautiful. Mm. Like almost every single other comic, it is it is very pretty. It looks good. It's uh, it reads easy. It just yes, that when it comes to the story and the character, uh, yeah. this comic jerks you around. I'm gonna do sound very foul right now, but I have to do it. It takes your. That's not a word. Can grab it and just throws you. <laughs> 
every which way, and it just it jerks you around with it, and it's so oh, annoying. It doesn't. It doesn't. It, it it's kind of to the point that sometimes it actually gets a bit insulting. Yeah, but it's still it is it is still entertaining in mm. that yeah it is still worth reading yeah, true, but don't true. expect don't expect to like applejack after this comic or don't expect to like uh granny smith and uh, after this comic uh, you might like big macintosh <laughs> he makes good use of those mirrors uh, i i don't I was think to say, that was a that was a fun little aside that big macintosh could have that little ego <laughs> yeah yeah well, this comic was released right after the Big Macintosh looks for a box of nails <laughs> uh, epic story arc. So I think he was like, oh, wow, maybe there is a reason for why all the Phillies in Ponyville, in Ponyville like me. Uh, but you know what? You know what? I mean, the final scene, the end, that's a beautiful picture there. Like how the shadow comes down with a squash there. I mean, it looks pretty. Overall, there's some great art. There's some... Uh, funny moments, mm-hmm. you know, a little bit of chuckles at least. Mm-hmm. A that... very power, sorry, go ahead. Uh, a very powerful page in for Applejack's character. Right. But the thing with this comic is, you measure its quality in in pages rather than story. Mm-hmm. That is true. That is true. I mean, uh, how many good pages are in this comic compared to how many bad things are in it? And I will say, I will be honest with you, two. The number of good pages in this comic is two. Mm-hmm. No more. I mean, um, I'll, I'll go with five. Big Macintosh, uh, Macintosh on the mirror, Apple, Applejack the tree, Fluttershy be so jelly. Mm, yeah. I, I... And <laughs> Applejack's, uh, Applejack's accepting and the closing mm-hmm. page, just, the, yeah. just in terms of art style. Yeah, and still, that is like, you said, five pages. That is still five pages out of 25. Yeah. Uh, 20, 22 if we don't count the cover and the and the, uh, the introductory page. So that is tw- five out of 22. That's a fail. That's an F. Yeah, but you if know we, what? If, if it comes to quantity. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I, I Overall, for story, not one of my favorites of out of the main six micro... But in terms of art, I can't say much because I like the art. The story, does, it's just the story. It's a rehash of whatever has been told before. And page two, one of my favorites, Wet, wet, wet Applejack. Yay. One, uh, one thing that I wanted to ask, Norman, how long has the review uh, been so far? Uh, I'm guessing about 40 minutes, probably. Maybe 40? Less than that, maybe, yeah. Mm, because I wanted to, uh, I actually wanted to bring up a point okay. that might cause some discussion between the, the three of us. Is that if you notice with these comics, more or, more or less like how with the show in general, mm-hmm. when we don't have a good story, we focus on the visuals, and we don't have good visuals, we focus more on the story. <laughs> like if you remember with the. Uh, with the Twilight Sparkle Micro, oh, yeah. not many people like the art style. Everybody will agree that Celestia and Spike, they look very weird. Oh, yeah. But <clears throat> maybe but most of us will agree that the story and the way Twilight interacts and all that, it's all really good. It's very well written. And at times, it's it's even a little touching. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and in the same way with, uh, with the Fluttershy Micro, uh, we will agree that Fluttershy as a character in there, it's absolutely boring and interesting and they don't do anything with her it's just the, she's just there she's kind of like a ploy in her own story but visually wise it's a gorgeous looking comic with all those uh all those embroidery sculptures and all that that looks that looks really really beautiful uh very rarely we have a comic that combines both and i'm going to be honest and direct right here it's only when katie cook and andy price are on the helm mm, yeah they 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 make a perfect uh couple when it um, comes to drawing the uh car comics yeah i mean and katie cook has very witty writing and a very good take on the characters andy price is absolutely outrageously funny when it comes to drawing the characters and puts a lot of details in the background as well as a lot of references to movies, TV mm-hmm. shows, other comics. So, yeah, it's like when they are at the helm, that's fine. You don't have to worry about anything. It's like mm-hmm. they, they are like a safe haven. Oh, that's true. That's true. But when, every, when anybody else is, is there, it's, it's kind of like a gamble. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, well. Although the real test of our, our metal will be when we get to Friends Forever number one. Ooh, that's going to hurt. What are you going to do with... What are you going to do when go there's not good art and there's not a good story? Uh, go with a, go with personal preference, to be honest with you, because I, uh. I, I, cannot, I cannot hate that comic. I will tell you uh, after the show is over, but, mm. uh, after this review is over, but I cannot hate that comic. Oh, boy. Oh I, will, boy. I, will, I will tell you why right after we, f- we wrapped up this review, because yeah. I'm looking to keep you guys in suspense, but mm. I will tell you why. Anyway, so oh. final verdict. Overall... What do you guys will will write this comic? Uh, for me, I would go for uh, I hate to put a low number, but six out of ten. It has some good points here and there, but it's a rehashing of the series. Like this story has been told in season one, episode four. Is it, is it episode three? I forgot. But still, it's it's a rehash. It, we've seen this before. It's not. It's not their first time we've seen this story and if this story haven't been told before then I have no problems with it but it has been told so yeah what about you Silver? well I, I in our last podcast I measured my review in the number of traumatized uh, viewers yes. I created uh-huh. however I think I think James has surpassed me in terms of dark imagery with oh. his uh, <laughs> grabs you by the sausage <laughs> so, so props to you, James. I I'm gonna say that it's a decent story, but not a great one. Uh, it is it is a mark on the story, almost as dark as Applejack's freckles. Oh but, yeah, true that, true that. <laughs> but all all in all, you gotta look for the little things because unfortunately, the larger piece doesn't grip grip you. Mm-hmm. True that, true that. You you know what? I this just hit me. This, this just hit me because we're talking about the Friends Forever series. We're talking about this one, Spike, Spike's micro. Yeah, that's gonna be a Ooh. challenging one. That one, I I cannot wait to do that one. That one, that one actually. Okay, I'm not going to say what I think about that one. I will tell you when the show's wrapped up. I, mm. I didn't even say the final verdict on on my. Oh, yeah. Okay. That like uh to me. This is uh, this is this is difficult. I am not going. I, I don't want to give it a fail. Like mm-hmm. to me, below five will be an absolute fail. It will be like no, the comic has completely failed on it, and it only has a few good things in it. That isn't true with this one. That that is. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. That isn't true with any of the comics. Okay. They all have something good going for them. Mm-hmm. But let's put it this way: if I go, I have all of the comics in physical format and oh. in digital format, and if I go to a comic book shop and I see uh, a comic that I really like, I will buy it again mm-hmm. if they have a different cover. J- just so it can have like all different covers or maybe because I want to get uh, a Spanish edition of the comic oh, wow. because collect- collect- the collector's value. If I see a-, a copy of the Applejack Micro, I wouldn't buy it. Like I have one, I have the digital one, I read it, I, I got it, that's it. I am. I, and I don't plan to reread it. Mm-hmm. I will give it. I will give it a, uh, a solid five out of ten. I wouldn't give it more. It's just average. Looks great. Has good things in it. But I am not going to. I'm sorry. And it kills me because Applejack is my second favorite character. She ended up growing on me, especially after season three, which I think it's it's, it's one of the best examples of why Applejack is such a good character. But. God, this comic. No, no. I'm sorry. Yeah. But you know what? You know what? Maybe next week's comic review is much better. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's, oh gosh. It's reflections, yes. So. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah. Reflections. Okay, so yeah, next week we're going to be reviewing the four issue character, uh, comic arc. Uh, first four issue comic arc we had since the Nightmare Rarity mm-hmm. uh, one. Ever, ever since then, all the other issues, all the other arcs have been like either two page, two comics or one. So uh, this is going to be a, a long, long comic arc to, to tackle, oh, of course, yeah. written by Katie Cook and drawn by Andy Price. And I am already preoccupied Norman with my opinion on it <laughs> because I am not letting, I'm not letting go of my opinion. He's, hey. he's confused. No, I'm no, no. I, I love that comic. I, I don't care what you say, man. To me, this is good. This is good. Nah, yeah, yeah, whatever. 
<laughs> All right. So yeah, I think that's it, that's it for uh, this week's uh, episode comic pony review. Mm-hmm. This hiatus is lasting longer than the other t- three combined. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I've picked up a new hobby. I've been playing Magic the Gathering. Oh, God. Uh, it's still giving money to Hasbro. I'm true, Dad. <laughs> so, anywho, James, take us out. Yeah, I have been James Cork. And I am Norman Sanzo with the Magic the Gathering addiction. And I'm Silver Quill, who still doesn't like squashes. <laughs> never had a squash. I won't have one. Maybe I will go to the shops and get one. Have a good one, everyone. See you all next week. Toodles. Beware the squash. <laughs> <laughs>